I'm discussing the people. As if they came from Peyton Place. <laughs> He's 72 and she's 65. That's a very dangerous age. Which one? Both. Well, I'm not going to talk about this case anymore, even if you filibuster. That's it. No more talk? Lots more talk. I'll just keep talking and talking and talking and talking. Well, that isn't exactly what I had in oh, mind. Oh, you when didn't I told keep you this that... in your mouth long enough. What are you talking about? I had it there at least five minutes. It reads 92. I guess I didn't have it in my mouth long enough. Where have I heard that before? Sounds familiar. <laughs> make all that noise. Do you have to be out of your bed? It's no good for your cold. <laughs> the leak is in the faucet. But the pipes are down here. He's in there. I've got a surefire remedy for that cold. Thank you for your concern, but... But where does the missus keep her dirty laundry? <laughs> the what? Well, there's nothing like a dirty sock around the neck to loosen up a cold. <laughs> take long. Objective people like ourselves should be able to reach an early verdict. Oh, I think we should take all the time we need. I'm objective, but I did not realize it would be that simple. Are you objective, Mrs. Morley? It's an obvious case of a scheming housekeeper trying to take advantage of her employer. That Bentley is some case herself, isn't she? <laughs> Ladies, we should all feel fortunate that someone of Mrs. Bentley's standing is available to serve as our foreman. Her wisdom, experience, charm, grace, and leadership ability are perfectly suited to lead this jury to a just verdict. I wonder how long it took her to rehearse that speech. Therefore, I nominate Mrs. Bentley and move that all nominations be closed. Thank you for your support. I believe the usual procedure is to open the floor for discussion, so I'll begin. And Mr. Renee contends that Mr. Pringle promised to marry her if she would stay with him instead of accepting another position at $20 a month more than he was paying her. Mr. Pringle admitted that arrangement. I know that, and he kept his bargain. He asked her to marry him. 20 years later. Well, what difference does that make he did propose? Are they married now? No, because Miss Renee walked out on him. Walked in on him. Imagine how that poor woman felt when she found her fiancé in the company of another woman. Yeah, that yeah. Pringle was a fink. I know. <laughs> Ladies! Ladies! Each of you who wishes to speak will have an opportunity later. Now, where was I? You were on the part where Miss Renee double-crosses Mr. Pringle. Oh, yes. Well, put yourself in Mr. Pringle's place. Always kind, fair and honest. Suddenly confronted by a disgruntled employee who thinks she sees the chance to lay her hands on $4,800. Oh, 
Yes, Mrs. Morley. If Miss Renee were a scheming woman, it would have been more profitable for her to marry a man of Mr. Pringle's means. She would have overlooked his being out with someone else. A woman as clever as Miss Renee has other irons in the fire, and with $4,800. She could skip to Paris with Rack Hudson. <laughs> Just to get an idea of where we are, why don't we vote? Uh, not yet. I think we all have an idea of what Miss Renee was thinking about when she brought suit. Let's not be hasty, Mrs. Bentley. I think it would be helpful if we all had a copy of the transcript and we could check the actual testimony. Good idea. Why is it a good idea? Because it is. I have a clever answer. <laughs> concludes our discussion. Now, if there are no other questions, let's take a ballot. Question. <laughs> if everyone as hungry as I am. I think we should vote after lunch. I think we should vote now. All right, let's vote now. Let's vote on whether to go to lunch. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the jury is adjourned one hour for lunch. Hello? Hello, Glenn. Well, you don't sound any better. I can't understand why not with all the rest I've been getting. <laughs> Where did you find Clyde Stokes? Clyde Stokes? Oh, the plumber. He got here right after you left it, ever since I've been treated to the soundtrack from World War II. <laughs> And the doctor? Oh, who needs a doctor? Your bad Stokes has been filling in beautifully. Any minute, I'll be wearing a dirty sock around my deck. Of course. How did I ever forget that one? Are you coming home soon? No, it's going perfectly. We just broke for lunch, and we haven't even voted yet. Katie, you're not supposed to be judge and jury. You're supposed to be completely objective. Are you said you're being highly emotional. Well, I believe in what I'm doing. I will not see two lives be ruined. Now, all they need is a little time to get together. Oh, well, all right, Katie. Get home as soon as you can, will you? I'm sorry, Glenn. Why don't you get some rest? I'm sure you'll feel better after the doctor comes. Or after the plumber leaves. <laughs> hunger is appeased, I believe we are ready to take a ballot. Uh, Miss Crawford, would you have... Uh, uh, excuse me. I gave it a great deal of thought during lunch, and I have an idea that would help us reach a decision. Wouldn't the ballot do that? I mean, the fairest kind of decision. Now, we all have copies of the transcript. I think we should read aloud the key parts of the testimony. Oh, oh that's very nice. Yeah. Tell me you're going to sit there and read the transcript? Well, not just read it, but act it out. Oh, oh wow. uh, uh, Now, uh, Miss Crawford. Yes? You be Mr. Pringle. Alice, you be Miss Renee's lawyer. And uh, I'll be Miss Renee. And isn't it true? But despite previous disappointments, still you are ready to forgive him if only he had proposed again. I object. <laughs> Miss Crawford, when you object, you must do it with more feeling. Jump to your feet. Remember, you're a man on trial. That was so nervous. <laughs> I object. <laughs> oh, that was really excellent. Let's start again on page 12. <laughs> I was a Red Cross volunteer folding bandages in the hospital when they wheeled him in. Did you see him? No, my back was turned. If you didn't see him, would you care to tell us how you met him? He pinched me. I object. So did I. <laughs> Will you tell us where he pinched you? In the hallway. <laughs> and that was her testimony. Didn't the ladies do a lovely job? <laughs> the curtain calls have been completed. We have time to vote before adjournment. We do? Why, it's 4.30. I believe you'll watch this fast. I have 4.10. An emergency telephone call for Mrs. Morley. Me? <laughs> Yes, 
measles. 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 I have had every other childhood disease. Now, why couldn't your husband catch one of those? It was quick thinking calling the county health department right away. Measles can be very serious to an adult. Yes, yeah, so well, thank you. Ow! <laughs> oh, uh, Mrs. Marley, I understand you haven't even taken one ballot. Now, what seems to be the problem? Oh, there's no problem, Your Honor. We were just about to take a vote when I got this unfortunate call. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, let's face it, your health does come first. We always have time for a verdict. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> have the custard. It'll cheer you up. How could I get the measles now and not when the boys had them? Well, the worst part is over when you get the rash. Did anybody call the plumber and tell him about the measles? Don't worry about him. He was here when the doctor came, and he was very helpful. He gave the doctor several cures that, for some reason, had been omitted in medical school. Do you have any law books in the house? In the library, but I don't think you're going to find anything on how to stall a jury until the litigants decide that they would rather be married. I just want to look up something on the statute of limitations. Katie, there are 11 other women on that jury with you. You haven't even allowed them to express an opinion. They can express an opinion. You haven't let them vote. All I want is one more day. I think you're toying with an awful lot of human lives, including mine. Now, I'd rather have you nursing me than some, some plumber. I'd rather be home, too. I'm just doing what I think is right. That is what Napoleon said before Waterloo. <laughs> address the jury. Now, ladies, I will be brief. I have been a member of the legal profession for over 30 years, 15 of which I've spent on the bench, and this is the first time that I've ever experienced a case whereby the jury deliberations took longer than the trial itself. <laughs> so I've instructed your foreman to have a ballot taken as soon as possible to determine if this jury can cast the nine votes required to make a decision. Now, if not, I will assemble another jury. <laughs> I'm sure none of us wishes to be remembered as the jury that was not capable of even taking a ballot. <laughs> Madam Foreman, I don't think we should be embarrassed because we want to examine the facts from every point of view. I'm sure the judge will understand that. I don't understand. <laughs> A point of law? That's what she said. <laughs> well, Mrs. Bentley, what a little surprise do you have for me this time? I think Mrs. Morley can explain. We have a question, Your Honor. It seems that the case boils down to a promise made by Mr. Pringle. Now, you remember the promise he made to Miss Renee 20 years ago? Uh, your question, Mrs. Morley. We would hate to deliver a verdict in favor of either party and then discover that it's not valid because the promise was made so many years ago. Mrs. Bentley, I rule that the case is valid as presented at the trial. Now, will you please return to the deliberation room and take a ballot? <laughs> just... just one? Ballot? <laughs> you know, them pipes in the basement were just about ready to go. Boy, are you lucky you called me when you did. I'll say. Since you arrived, a simple cold has become the measles. And what started out as a drippy faucet has evolved into a a complete overhaul of our entire plumbing system. <laughs> well, all you needed was a well-known ounce of prevention. Like, right now. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Don't you know that looking at measles in the mirror can cause what? <laughs> Mr. Stokes, I am constantly astounded at your knowledge of medicine. Yeah. You know, I would have made a great doctor. And a millionaire, too, charging by the hour. <laughs> Uh, 
like Mrs. Moore, the judge and the jury, and I and my husband, to say nothing of my Tuesday Bridge Club and my hairdresser, are all very upset with you. Well, I'm very sorry to have upset all these strangers. And we all, all feel that we must reach a verdict. Well, I think that's a very good idea. Therefore, I surrender. I give in. I capitulate unconditionally. Which means? I'll switch to your side. Miss Renee can have her money. I'd give it to her myself. Anything to get out of here. I hardly think that's a just reason for changing a verdict. Well, how's this for a good reason, then? You convince me. Better. Uh, ladies! <laughs> ladies! I am convinced Mrs. Morley is right. Oh, okay. well, thank you, Mrs. Bentley. That's very considerate of you, but... I wonder if we have thoroughly examined all the uh, evidence. Oh, oh okay. come on. Okay. We will vote, ladies. Uh, Miss Crawford, the ballots. Ladies, the judges get uh, You can stop worrying. Tell the judge to stop worrying. We have taken a ballot. Let me see. That's uh, four, five, six, seven for Miss Renee, three for Mr. Pringle, one confused, <laughs> and one abstain. Well, that's close, girls. You just stick with it. <laughs> Bailiff. I, um, uh, I wonder how Miss Renee and Mr. Pringle are standing up under the strain. I can't discuss the case. Of course not. But, um, uh, I just wonder, are they unhappy as they wait or angry with each other? You gotta be kidding. But I can't talk about it. You can't say something like you've got to be kidding and then not talk about it. It's the law. It's not fair. Are they making up? Well, he'd like to. He's even proposed. But she... But I can't talk about the case. You just can't say something and get a person all excited and then stop. That's cruel and inhuman. But it's the law. Well, it's unconstitutional. Did he ask her to marry him? And she said no. All she wants is the money. But I'm not going to talk about the case. I respect you for that. <laughs> All right, ladies, we are very close now. Only two more votes, Miss Renee, and we can all go home. Let's vote. Ah, uh, just a minute. Mrs. Morley, please, I feel certain that your side will win on the next ballot. Ladies, if you could just bear with me one more moment. It is not my side, even though sometimes I have acted that way. You most certainly have. And I apologize for that. And also for all the time I've taken. But I had an idea that Miss Renee and Mr. Pringle could get together if we gave them a chance. But what has that to do with this case? Exactly nothing, you're right. Even whether Miss Renee was the nice person I thought she was or not is not the issue. It's strictly a matter of whether or not she deserves the money. Right, now can we vote? Further, there are 12 people on a jury for a reason. My behavior has been undemocratic, and it certainly has not accomplished anything. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Morley. Oh? It accomplished one very important thing. I have decided to become a professional actress. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor has never been safer, Miss Crawford. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> but could we run through the evidence once more? This time, I'll be Miss Renee. <laughs> Let's, Let's vote. <laughs> So glad to be back. And I must admit, I feel terribly proud that I was so much needed. Oh? And I go away for one week, and you all fall apart. Well, we're glad to have you back, but I think we can hardly attribute the measles to your absence. I don't know. You never got them while I was around. Well, she has a point there. 
The minute I take my eye off Katie, what does she go and do? And what do I go and do? Desert your husband for a whole week. Well, I would hardly call jury duty desertion. Well, you never had it while I was around. She has a point there, too. Oh, well, while you give some thought to it, I'll go and get some more water. Oh, uh, no, there's no more water. Do you mean what I think you mean? What do you think she means? He thinks I mean the water isn't running. Why don't you call a plumber? I call the plumber, but he can't come. After all that money we gave him? I'm afraid we gave him something else, too. Measles? <laughs> Tonight at 7 Eastern, Hayes and Curry get themselves captured by some hostile Indians on Alias Smith & Jones. Then at 8, Jill Ireland guest stars on The Wackiest Ship in the Army. Now stay with us for the Patty Duke Show, next on CBN.